ओके 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 नाउ नाउ इट्स ऑडिबल येस ओके सो सॉरी फॉर द इनकन्वीनियंस ओके लेट स्टार्ट अगेन साइंटिस्ट फैब्रिकेट टू डी प्रोटीन मोनोलेयर डेट कैन हेल्प टू स्टडी डिजीज लाइक एमोलॉडोसिस सो इट इज़ अ रेयर डिजीज डैट बिल्ड्स अप इन द बॉडी एंड इट विल अल्टीमेटली लीड टू मल्टीपल ऑर्गन फेलियर ओके सो फॉर दिस डिजीज द साइंटिस्ट बाई असेंबलिंग लाइजोजाइम वॉट इज इट इट इज़ अ बेसिकली एन एंजाइम डैट अकर्स इन बॉडी इन लिक्विड फॉर्म दैट इज इट कैन बी इन आर टीयर्स इन सलाइवा सो इन लिक्विड फॉर्म दिस इज इन आर बॉडी एंड बाय मॉडल प्रोटीन इन स्टडिंग डिजीज लाइक एमोलॉज सो दिस एंजाइम विल हेल्प इन क्यूरेटिंग क्योरिंग सच डिजीज विच इज़ अ रेयर डिजीज एंड दिस डिजीज affects the organs like heart kidneys liver sleep nervous system and digestive tracts okay so it is a 2d protein monolayer so this term is important next is e-commerce cargo movement set scores for ganga national waterways one as inland waterways authority of india and amazon signs mou so according to the world bank report the rail road and transport as i've already told you consume 18.5% and 91.6% more fuel than water transport so water transport is the most convenient transport that can help in achieving the target of the government that is of green energy and leaving minimum carbon footprints so wh even world bank is focusing on that so an mou has been signed with the amazon for promoting cargo movement and transportation of customer shipments and products via inland waterways and using ganga national waterway 1 what is the aim to leverage the efficiency and sustainability of water to streamline logistic reduce min environmental impact and foster economic growth okay so basically in such news you have to remember that between whom the mou has been signed and what is the purpose of the mou okay Okay. Next is Inter Command Ocean Sailing Race flagged off at Kochi. So the second edition of Inter Command Ocean Sailing Race 2023 started from Kochi to Goa. See, this destination is important and can be mark can be asked in one mark question in any exams. So it was started from Kochi and to Goa, and the race is featuring four four. 40 footer indian naval sailing vessels bulbul neelkant kadalpur and haryal these four you have to remember that which four four uh, 40 footer indian naval vessels have been uh, participating and this is the important news why because for the first time both men and women officers and sailors mixed crew is there which can be seen in such in this sailing race okay this is happening for the first time now rsc honored with best employer in diversity and inclusion award by sochm so rsc is continuously in news from past 3 4 months so you have to uh, know the static details that when it was established it is uh, what type of uh, company it is so rsc a maharatna cpsc established in 1969 under ministry of power so when it was established and under which ministry okay and what category of maharatna mini ratna is this company okay so it provides long term loans and other finance products for power infrastructure comprising of generation transmission distribution renewable energy and new technologies like electrical vehicles okay so it highlights the rsc's commitment to creating a workplace that celebrates differences fosters innovation promotes equal opportunities for all employees so the award has been given to rsc why because it has been observed that it is uh, supporting motivating the different culture different uh, uh, practices of employees and innovation is been happening in the company okay that's why Next is consultative committee of Ministry of Steel meets to discuss first ever initiative to introduce labeling and branding of steel sector 
product so this is the first ever initiative that's why it is important okay it is by any ministry to introduce labeling and branding of the sector's product so this is for the first time that any ministry is introducing such kind of branding and labeling that's why this news becomes very important and ministry of steel is that ministry the first ministry to come up with such a branding exercise for indian made steel this will represent india's strong manufacturing potential made in india branding provides for labeling of domestic steel products with details of product so there can be a question that what type of details will be available in such branding and labeling the first will be the details of the product the made in india logo along with a qr code okay what qr code tells that at which batch it has been processed or it, where is the location or the final destination of the that particular steel so there will be more integrated data there will be more integrated data about the steel production and it is easier to manage such data and provide progress in the ministry so this is a strategic plan in two phases the first phase integrated steel producer will progressively increase product range with a made in india label this phase is expected to be completed by march 2024 this date is important and second phase made in india branding will be extended to the specialized steel plants so in phase 1 the focus of the steel producer will be in providing the range of products so there will be multiple range of ranges of the product and in phase 2 it will provide the extension of the specialized steel producing plants okay the date for phase 1 will be that is to be completed by march 2024 okay everything is clear till now any doubt yes any doubt anybody okay apeda facilitates cashew exports on national cashew day to bangladesh qatar malaysia and usa this news is particularly important okay because this is the first ever shipment of cashew so bangladesh will be receive the first ever shipment of cashew nuts all the way from odisha so this des this destination is also important and this destination is also important from where it is starting and what is the ultimate destination so the export of cashew will be done from odisha to bangladesh and this is the first ever shipment now the scientific name of the cashew is important and what is the production of india in percentage and at global level what are the major producing states of cashew all that data is important okay so the agriculture and processed food product development authority apeda an organization under ministry of commerce played an instrumental role in export and facilitator of cashew nut shipment to bangladesh will be one then qatar malaysia usa to mark national cashew day so on 23rd of november there was national cashew day and after after cote de war india is the largest producer and exporter of cashew nuts with a share of more than 15% okay so india is second largest first is this second india and third is vietnam and what is the percentage of india this is more than 15% okay now the scientific name of the cashew the scientific name of the cashew is this anar anacardium occidentale okay the word ana means upwards and cardium means the heart so it is basically telling about the shape of the cashew based on which its scientific name has been given okay so india is the top export destination what are the top destinations of india for exports of cashew first is uae then netherlands japan and saudi arabia maharashtra andhra pradesh odisha karnataka and tamil nadu are the major cash 
cashew producing states in India. So what are the important destinations for export of cashew and what are the important states that are producing cashew in majority is important to remember okay and also the scientific name if we consider exams like NABAD and all okay. India becomes chair of international sugar organization for 2024 to lead global sugar sector. This news is also important okay. So it is the 63rd council meeting edition. So ISO is headquartered in London has announced India to be the chair of the organization of 2024. So India is do, uh, doing very well because India is producing most of the sugar, sugar cane and uh, this is helping in the ethanol blending targets of India okay due to molasses that is the byproduct of sugar cane so India has been the largest consumer and second largest producer of sugar in the world with about 15 percent share in global sugar consumption and 20 percent of sugar India Indian trends affects the global market profusely so also it has been highlighted that while the sugar price were reaching uh, there was a growth in sugar prices for more than 40 percent India is still able to contain the prices in limits for sugar okay that was the very good performance for India so while the global prices were hiked by about 40 percent in one year India has been able to contain prices within 5 percent increase okay and it is a remarkable it is remarkable that India ethanol blending percentage in India has increased from 5 percent that was in 1920 to 12 percent in 22-23 while the production has increased from 173 crore liters to more than 500 crore liters okay so target is important and the static details of ISO okay so national Gopal Ratna awards that is to be conferred on 26th of November that is on national milk day celebration so awards has been based on the applications invited through online applications total of 1770 applications were received so you have to remember the category of awards in which are given because it is not uh, feasible to remember all the awardees so it uh, you have to remember the categories and the prize amount for each category okay so the first is best dairy farmer rearing indigenous cattle per fellow breed second is best dairy cooperative milk producer company and third one is the best artificial insemination technician okay award consists of a cash prize 5 lakh for first rank 3 lakh for second and 2 lakh for the third rank with a certificate of merit and a memento in first two categories livestock sector is crucial to indian economy so there was a percentage given in the PIB that livestock is very important for the Indian economy comprising one third agriculture and allied sector GVA and having over 8% of compounded annual growth. So live sector is, uh, livestock sector is very important for the Indian agriculture and it has been given in every news related to agriculture in every PIB. Okay, So it is very important to remember the growth rate and uh, every the livestock census details okay of the recent data nhpc conferred with the economic times hr word exceptional employee experience award so nhpc has been uh, has won this award that is for the prestigious economic hr world exceptional employee experience award so in short form ethr world x awards okay you have to remember the category in which nhpc got this award so large scale enterprise category the award of uh, the award was presented in a glittering ceremony organized by ethr world this was held at bangalore this place is important category is important the award has been conferred to nhpc for what for recognizing the employee centric hr initiative okay Ministry of Rural Development organized the fourth consultative workshop in collaboration with Tamil Nadu state rural livelihood mission. So with which state this consultative workshop was uh, has been organized this is important 
द एडिशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट थीम इज इम्पॉर्टेंट थीम इज वुमेंस इकोनॉमिक एम्पावरमेंट थ्रू प्रमोशन ऑफ प्रोड्यूसर कलेक्टिव सो इट एम्स टू वीव एन एरे ऑफ सपोर्ट ऑफ इनकम फॉर जनरेशन इनकम जनरेशन फॉर एस एच जी वुमेन लेवरेजिंग पार्टनरशिप विद इंस्टीट्यूशन सो बेसिकली देर विल बी अ पैनल डिस्कशन इन फोर एरियाज फॉर वुमेन this uh, basic this uh, consultation is basically for the support of women self help group in rural area areas with the state of tamil nadu okay so what are the panel discussion and also one more important thing the participants from seven states are there you have to remember the name of seven states all are from south only tamil nadu kerala odisha puducherry andhra pradesh telangana and karnataka these are the seven states or just remember the number if you can't remember the name of states so the four panel discussion will be on scaling up the tapestry of women owned enterprises and sectoral intervention and role of women owned enterprises scope for promoting federation of women led enterprises and making sustainable women led enterprises so this basically involves encouraging more and more enterprises that uh, are led by women and uh, involving in the process making the process more speedy and encouraging them for sustainable enterprises ministry of rural development and so ministry of rural development and moh and farmers welfare launched the training of krishi sakhis for promotion of natural farming okay so the initiative aim to train and certify 50000 this number is important okay last time fpos were asked in uh, in some exam that were 10000 or 15000 okay so this number is important that how many krishi sakhis will be trained and certified so 50000 for natural farming organic and natural farming and for the 5 day training course training modules have been prepared by ncoenf what is this this is the national center for organic and natural farming he stated that the minister stated that the role of natural farming initiative is of paramount importance for both the ministry for transforming the villages as samriddhi villages and to create lakpati self help group members so basically the ministry of rural development and ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare launched this initiative to support the women and uh, the lakpati didi's initiative of the government of india and it will also transform the villages from a traditional village to samriddhi villages okay by giving the training and how to manage the organic and natural farming okay training will be of 5 days and how many uh, train uh, certified krishi sakhis will be 50000 this data is important in this news okay yantra platform provides ayush system of medicine to rejuvenate and become a global wellness movement so to be held at national institute of mental health and neuroscience in association with jignasa the theme of model of integration in healthcare to reinforce and rekindle the effectiveness of ayush system of medicine in curing as well as enriching the quality of lives of people motto is learning ayush to practice ayush so basically yantra is a platform in which the various activities related to ayush that will not only help in curing the disease that will also make the lives better of any of the individuals of the country by providing them the idealistic lifestyle that should be prescribed as per the ayurveda okay so they will not only just cure the disease they will also focus on changing the lifestyle of the people okay so this is an integrated platform next is the diamond jubilee of india's first sounding rocket launch from tumba in kerala so this is in line with the chandrayaan 3 and aditya l1 missions that have, that were achieved in 2023 and this is the first uh, the first sounding rocket launched at a function vikram sarabhai space center thumba equatorial rocket launch so this was the jubilee of the 
first sounding rocket launch and the PM Modi has asked ISRO to aim for India's first manned space mission. So basically this news is important first because it is the jubilee of India's first rocket launched from where? Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at Thumbai Equatorial rocket launch. And what were the target years of the missions of the India? That Gaganyaan mission has to be achieved by 2025, lunar sample return mission, Bharti Antariksh station that is Indian space station to be achieved by 2035 and aim of the India for the first Indian to set foot on the moon by 2040. Okay, These were the missions of the government of India. Now communications, the uh, Minister of State Communications Dev, uh, Devu Singh Chauhan inaugurates Hamfest India 2023. So this is a two day national convention and this Hamfest basically Hamfest India stands as a signal to the continuing spirit and evolution of amateur radio. So basically Ham is a short form you can say or the um, more easy name for amateur radio. Okay. Uniting enthusiasts, fostering innovation and celebrating advancements in the field. So hams are always ready to help when all communication fails. So the uh, emitter radio operators that is ham. The uh, features of hams were praised here that when all communication fails, hams were very hams are very reliable source through which communication can be made. Okay, so this. Hamfest India is all about that only and also Hamfest India 2023 brings together a diverse community of amateur radio operators showcasing the latest innovation, communication technique and technological advancement. So all of the conferences about the ham, what it is and how, uh, how capable it is for transforming communication in, in response to the other communication uh, things available in technology. So any innovations, technological or uh, communication techniques are uh, praised here related to hams, okay. Third phase of Yuva Sangam under Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat. So uh, Yuva Sangam is basically the Sangam of the North and South, okay. The age limit under this Sangam is 18 to 30 years. This is very important. You have to remember the age limit. Age group is from 18 to 30 years and Yuva Sangam under the Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat initiative endeavors to promote the experiential learning and introduce youth to rich diversity of our country and the Ministry of Education kick started the third phase. This is the third phase, 50 students will participate, age group is 18 to 30 and what are the areas? Five exposure areas. You have to remember the name of these areas can be asked uh, as odd one out in question. So, Paryatan means tourism. Parampara, this is easy, that is tradition. Pragati means development. Pradyogik means technology. And Paraspar Sampark, people to people. So, from Sampark, you can uh, remember people to people. You only have to remember the Paryatan tourism, okay? Clear till now? Okay, next is government announces mandatory blending of compressed biogas in CNG and PNG segments of CGD sector. So compressed biogas blending obligation, this news is important because as I've already told you that our government is focusing more and more on green initiatives of the country. So compressed biogas, green hydrogen mission, the green ammonia, all are very important. So the key objective of CBO here is to stimulate the demand for Compressed biogas, import substitution for liquefied natural gas, savings in forex. How savings in forex? By because when we will uh, produce more compressed biogas and there will be more demand for this, we will obviously reduce the import of the petroleum and the coal. Okay. So promoting circular economy and assist in achieving the target of net zero emission. This is the key. These are the key objectives of this. Now the investment will be made around rupees thirty seven thousand five hundred crores to facilitate an establishment of seven fifty. This target is important. Seven fifty compressed biogas project. 
by the year 2028-29 repeating again this line is very important 37,500 crores of investment for 750 compressed biogas projects by 28-29 okay now these three points are also important because targets are here because uh, CBO will be voluntary and not mandatory so there can be a statement based question whether CBO is mandatory or voluntary and what is the year of start it will start from 2025-26 and CBO shall be capped as 1%, 3%, 4% so in a phase it manner 1% will be completed by 25-26 3 percent by 26-27 and 4 percent by 27-28. So there can be a question, a one mark question based on the percentage and the phase at year for which by which year this has to be completed okay because many times there, ha there has been a question on such statements okay. Minister of States for Real, uh, Rural Development Shri Fagan Singh Kulaste and Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti inaugurates the 2D year of the Nai Chetna. Okay. Nai Chetna is a month long campaign as a Jan Andolan or people's movement. The Nai Chetna campaign is launched by Ministry of Rural Development. Ministry is very important. Now what is this Nai Chetna? So basically Nai Chetna is a campaign or initiative to make women to speak about the violences gender based violences that they are facing on day to day basis on in their home or at workplaces because it has been observed that most of the women stay quiet and they do not speak about the violence that is going on with them so this nai chetna will encourage the women to speak about the violence that they are facing okay so talking about the self help group shri kulaste said that we have now 10 crore self-help group across the country with 33% reservation for women and the campaign has been rightly given a tagline so these taglines are important that is sahenge nahi kahenge that is to make them talk and chuppi todenge so both the taglines are insisting the the purpose of the campaign that is to speak about the violence that they are facing okay Now constitution they observe at Vamnikom Pune. So at this institution 26 November that is the constitution day on which the, there, is the, there was the official acceptance of the constitution. This was held at Pune. Nothing much in this news. Next news is Indian Coast Guard conducts 9th national level pollution response exercise of Vardinar, Gujarat. So basically when there is an oil spill in the ocean, so Indian Coast Guard is the first defense force that will go for the rescue or for immediate help of the oil spills that is happening from the ships or movement of the ships, okay. You all know about the oil spills, right? Oil spills and this is very dangerous for the marine life also, okay. So basically the Coast Guard is conducting the, uh, the ninth national level pollution response exercise and ICG developed a surface, deployed a surface as well as air platforms including pollution response vessel, offshore petrol vessel, indigenous advanced light helicopter. So they have the uh, various technologies for configuring the marine pollution response. Okay, And Indian Coast Guard function as the central coordinating authority for response to oil spills and Indian waters. Okay, So they will be the first one to respond for any pollution related to marine life or any oil spills that is happening okay the coast guard will be the first force by the authority union minister shri pushottam rupala releases basic animal husbandry statistics 2023 during national milk day event in guwahati so where this event took place at guwahati so milk production in the country is estimated to estimated as 230 approximately you can remember okay you don't have to remember the entire 0.58 just 230 you can remember you will you'll be able to answer the question so 230 million tons during 2023 registered there's a growth of approximately 23 percent over the five past five years and also informed that the highest milk producing state is up this is important with a share of 15.72 in egg product in egg, egg production there's a growth of 33 0.31 percentage 
and union minister shri rupala informed that major contribution in the total egg production comes from andhra pradesh with a share of 20% okay approximately now ladakh will soon have a southeast asia's first night sky sanctuary says union minister so where will uh, the, this can be a one mark question that where will be the first night sky sanctuary will be established that will be in ladakh okay and the sanctuary uh, sanctuary is being set up with the help of indian institute of astrophysics bangalore the name of the institute is important because these days they don't ask simple questions in any exam if you consider okay whether it is a, any exam of bank like exim bank or some other bank uh, exams that is conducted by ibps because rbi is also conducted by ibps so ibps is not asking the direct questions on even for the one mark okay they will ask indirect question thoda guma ke puchta hai like they will give you that first uh, asia's uh, asia's first night sky sanctuary will be established in ladakh which institute is helping for establishing or setting up this sanctuary okay so it is astrophysics bangalore okay under which department department of science and technology petroleum minister hardeep puri inaugurates floating refueling cng station for boats at ravidas ghat so at ravidas ghat this uh, ghat there will be this refueling station for boats will be developed by gail india limited okay this is a baharatna psu mainly at ghats of varanasi the total cost will be approximately 17.5 crores and this is also the first of its kind in the world that's any refueling gas station will be established for that is floating for the boats this is first of its kind and it has a capacity of 4000 kg per day which can cater to 300 to 400 boats per day okay NHPC conferred second prize under annual report category of PRSI national so the first award under ETHR for NHPC and next is this award was presented during the international public relation festival okay this was held at new delhi and the award recognizes the overall high quality layout design of NHPC annual report so what is the quality of the annual report and uh, what is the contained and how it has been represented in the annual report the fonts and all everything designing so in this for this nhpc got the second award shri anurag singh thakur launches khelo india para games 2023 logo and mascot ujwala this is important now what this uh, ujwala that is a sparrow signifies symbol of pride of delhi so basically it is a reminder that strength comes in many forms and the human spirit is unbreakable so what is the uh, message with the mascot is also important that is delhi's pride and human spirit that is unbreakable is the mascot of khelo india gold medal to ministry of ayush for excellent performance in trade fair okay in india international trade fair So a total of 18 startups exhibited their products at Ministry of Ayush stall in the trade fair that was uh, that was uh, in Prag- uh, that was at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi okay Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs concludes two day familiarization program for dependent directors to bolster corporate governance in India So this was concluded in Goa place is important what it is uh, for it is aimed at bolstering corporate governance in India the Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs is the apex think tank of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and this intuitive along with several others is designed to improve the quality of boardroom composition discourse and the effectiveness in India so basically this is a, a conference that is focusing on the corporate governance in the indian economy okay nothing much to remember just remember that it was concluded in goa and aim is to bolster the corporate governance ministry of defense inks contract with bharat heavy electricals limited to procure 16 upgraded super rapid gun mount 
एंड एसेसरीज वर्थ रुपीज टू नाइन फाइव सिक्स पॉइंट एट नाइन करोर्स फॉर इंडियन नेवी सो अपग्रेडेड सुपर रैबिट गन माउंट विच विल बी मैन्युफैक्चर्ड बाय द नेम ऑफ द कंपनी डैट इज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड एट विच प्लांट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो बेल इज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग दिस एट हरिद्वार प्लांट ओके एंड वॉट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ और या यूनिक थिंग अबाउट दिस वेपन डैट इट इज केपेबल ऑफ मल्टीपल एंगेजमेंट्स इन मल्टीपल थ्रेड्स इन एरियो and has proven record of very good performance against missile and highly maneuverable fast attack crafts okay so this is a medium caliber and missile uh, medium caliber anti missile and anti aircraft point so at haridwar bhel will manufacture this gun uh, this uh, gun mount okay रक्षा मंत्री श्री राजनाथ सिंह अनवील्स दी क्रेस्ट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट 15 बी स्टेल्थ गाइडेड मिसाइल डिस्ट्रॉयर यार्ड 12706 इम्फाल सो दिस इज दर्ड ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट 15 बी सो दिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड वेयर इज द क्रेस्ट ऑफ द यार्ड इट इज इम्फाल गाइडेड मिसाइल डिस्ट्रॉयर वॉज अनवील्ड बाय रक्षा मंत्री राजनाथ सिंह ओके Now unveiling the Imphal's crest adorned with the Kangla Palace. Kangla is a fort in Manipur, and this palace is an important historical and archaeological site of Manipur. So the crest design depicts the Kangla Palace on the left and Kangla Sa on the right. This statement is important. Okay, that what it is uh, showcasing in right and left side. This can be asked. Kashi Tamil Sangam. Sangam of north to south. The launch of registration portal by IIT Madras. So, launch of registration portal is done by which IIT is important, and the objective is of reviewing the living bonds between Varanasi and Tamil Nadu, the two important centers of learning and culture. So, there will be the Sangam of the seven rivers, that is Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, Sindhu, Nar Narmada, Godavari, and Kaveri. Okay. Okay, so this news will discuss in detail because it is related to money laundering and World Bank is also involved there. So we will discuss from here in the next session. Okay, any doubts? Um, series this class uh, will not be conducted on Sundays. Okay. From tomorrow onwards, uh, I will take PIB in the morning around 10 a.m. Okay, I'm already informing you. Okay, only few news are left from uh, 29 to in 21 to 30th November PDF. So we'll quickly cover this, and after that we will conduct the PIB session from five five days. Okay, one to five December at uh, 10 a.m. daily. Okay. Okay. I have not discussed this news till now. I am saying that I will discuss it in the next session. I will tell everything. What is living bond? Okay. What is mule money? Everything will discuss in details from this news. That's why I am not discussing it in hurry. So we'll meet in the next PIB session. Okay. Okay so I write up here we'll discuss the further news in the next session okay thank you